Hello, welcome to the Friday, June 8th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. On Thursday, Adobe released a surprise update for Flash Player. This update fixes a single vulnerability, which apparently has already been exploited in attacks against targets in the Middle East. So at this point, only in very specific targeted attacks, there is no public exploit available as far as I can tell, but you probably should patch this vulnerability quickly. And researchers with Eclipsium published a blog post with details regarding two vulnerabilities in Supermicro firmware. Supermicro is quite popular in the server space and also some security appliances are based on Supermicro hardware. Now, the two vulnerabilities aren't necessarily easily exploitable. The first one, and I think probably the more critical one here, is a misconfiguration of the flash descriptor region. This is a specific region that's used for flash memory and typically it should be immutable, but, but apparently in some super micro systems, uh, this region is actually writable. So malware on the system may be able to overwrite this region. The second vulnerability I consider less problematic because exploitation requires physical access to the server and that's essentially insecure updates. So an attacker with physical access to the server may install a malicious firmware update. While this attack is difficult to perform, it's also very difficult to detect and to recover from. And Foscam, the manufacturer of popular low-cost video cameras, has released firmware updates that you probably should apply rather quickly. These updates fix three different vulnerabilities. No details have been released yet, just a very generic blog post by the team that actually discovered these vulnerabilities. But based on recent history, it probably won't take too long for details about these vulnerabilities to become known and for exploits to take advantage of them. Regardless of whether or not you're applying this update, you should never expose devices like this to the public internet. And Palo Alto's Unit 42 has an update for us about the Sophocy group, as Palo Alto calls them. This particular group is known to attack organizations uh, with a little bit more sophisticated attacks. Now, they use a somewhat diverse tool set, which makes it a little bit more difficult sort of to put all the pieces together here and actually attribute the different attacks that are sort of building on top of each other to this particular group, according to Palo Alto. The initial attack vector, well, it's good and proven spear phishing. The exploit they're using to actually gain access to systems is also nothing really all that special. It's the old DDE exploit that we have seen for quite quite a while now and if you are running currently well configured and patched systems it shouldn't really be a threat to you but we all know there are always many systems left behind that don't have all the patches applied and it's really hard to get our users not to click on a well-crafted attachment. Palo Alto's blog does include a number of indicators that you can use to hunt for this activity yourself, like user agents and IP addresses used by the command and control infrastructure. And talking about hunting for interesting exploits and the like, Remco published a tool today that does aid you in actually collecting some of these posts from Twitter. What Remco found is that, well, research Researchers and such often do post about things like phishing sites and such they uncover or actually complete phishing kits which gives you some insight in how these phishing sites operate. Problem is that uh, these tweets are fairly short-lived so 
Remco came up with a little script that automates the collection of these posts based on a couple keywords that he's looking for. Now, before you jump in and use these tools to collect all kinds of malicious links, uh, well, I hope you understood that a lot of uh, these posts are malicious, if not intentionally malicious by the poster, but the links they lead to may of course lead to malware that you have to treat with care. Well, that's it. Thanks again for listening. And by the way, I'm here in Augusta teaching intrusion detection in depth. If you're interested in the class, I'll be teaching it again in San Antonio, Texas, starting August 6th. You can always find some of the classes that I'm teaching at the bottom of the podcast page. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.